It's Thursday, January 3rd, and time for your Bobby Destiny evening news update. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Our top story. There is no decision on whether the Sanitation Service Authority will scrap or keep paying its employees overtime for working on weekends. The issue was on the table again today when management and the National Union of Public Workers met. Last month, the cash trap SSA had signaled intentions to stop overtime payments, but workers objected to the authority's proposal. The NUPW's position still is that the workers will continue to work the Monday to Friday as their work week, and any working on Saturdays and Sundays will be done at an overtime rate. We made this very clear to the Sanitation Service Authority. They're supposed to go back to their... Um, their principles and discuss the union's position. Our position is that instead of concentrating on overtime, the Sanitation Service Authority should concentrate on cutting costs. And to our mind, costs would be cut if they looked at the arrangement they have with the private base haulers, if they look at the arrangement they have with the tractors which are um, used down at the landfill. and. Um, it would be a lot cheaper if they use the workers of sanitation service authority, even if they have to pay them overtime. It would be a lot cheaper than having to engage the outside sources that they currently engage. Government delivers on a promise to kickstart a new and improved garbage collection system by adding two or seven Japanese-made garbage trucks to its aging fleet amid several setbacks. Late Wednesday night and into the wee hours of this morning, a large contingent from the Sanitation Service Authority, led by Environment and National Beautification Minister Trevor Prescott and Sanitation Service Authority Chairman Rudy Grant, invited journalists to witness the first shipment of refuse compactor vehicles which arrived at the Bridgetown port. Prescott, who promised that the operations of the SSA will be transformed, explained that the trucks, valued at $600,000, did not arrive at the end of December as promised because of a number of issues. They indicated they had a number of challenges. It's the first time that it has happened to them. Um, between the, the exporters, the manufacturers in Japan, and the, the transshipment, to United States of America. There were some problems in relation to tariff arrangements and between Japan and the United States of America, and these caused a lot of uh, uh, challenges, and in some cases, a delay, because the trucks had to go to the US in order to be retrofitted. And there were some difficulties with steel and so on, um, not STEL, the right steel, right? Um, that caused a, a delay in the delivery. But I believe that all reasonable human beings can appreciate that within the short space of time, we have been able to deliver the first two trucks. He assured that, that government will work quickly to get the two trucks on the road, while the efforts to secure the remaining five will continue in earnest. He also promised that Barbadians will soon be able to see the benefits of the garbage and sewage contribution levy. The sanitation department was in a very difficult position financially. And we did all that we can to make sure we put ourselves in a healthy position by asking the taxpayers to contribute to the water bill in the form of a levy. And that money is going to be used for the improvement and the general development of the sanitation department. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agriculture Society, James Paul, is urging authorities to get tough on illegal dumpers. A frustrated Paul made the call after discovering that the grounds of the BES at the grotto Beckles Road had been littered with garbage, including an old mattress, a stove, the remnants of a broken washing machine and a refrigerator, among other household items. He told Barbados today this is not the first time and he warned that enough is enough. This thing started uh, at least, I think, a few years ago. Um, we had something, we get people coming in and dumping things. We had called the Sanitation Service Authority then and they came in and they, we did a cleanup and it had stopped for a while. Um, 
most notably though, what, what, what we're finding now, again, it has started again. Because we try to keep the premises a certain way because you know, you don't want to keep stuff and, and keep the premises in a deplorable state that will offend your neighbors. So what we would do, we bring in a skip from time to time um, in which we would clean up the place and put the stuff in the skip. On this occasion, what we noticed was that when we came a morning, we found a fridge and stove and stuff like that in the skip that we had not used or we hadn't brought here. So again, now, um, what we did is that we recognized, and then not only that, there were other things were dumped beside the skip. So what we did is that we said, look, okay, we have a problem. Let's bring a second skip to try and get rid of this thing and try this thing. And lo and behold, now, the whole thing, and for instance, as you will see now, that we have things being dumped on the ground, right? Right here. And, you know, I, I, I heard about the recent removal of the skipping fee, um, you know, from, from, op from garbage operators. But it seems to me then that all the talk about the skipping fee being a problem, the skipping fee is not a problem. We have a situation in this country where people seem to think that they can basically flaunt the law and just dump garbage where they feel like dumping it. And it is unfortunate that we are tolerating these kind of things in our country. Police are continuing investigations into an incident at Risk Road, Fitz Village, St. James yesterday, which left Raymond Nurse of Fourth Avenue, Pickwick Gap, St. Michael, with head and air injuries. The 22-year-old was struck by an unknown man with a piece of wood to the right side of his head. The man escaped. Nurse was treated at the scene by ambulance personnel before being transported to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. A video of the incident was widely circulated on social media. There's regional and international news after this short break. Region now, the Guyana government is continuing its quest to explore all options to remain in office. Like the opposition, the government has met with foreign diplomats in the country and outlined its case. Handel Duncan has the report. A government delegation met with diplomats from the UK, US, Canada and the European Union and fully explained the government's position in the wake of the December 21, 2018 opposition or confidence motion against the APNUFC government. Prime Minister Moses Nagmutu, who headed the delegation, indicated that the government fully respects and will uphold the constitution. The Prime Minister did not stop short of reminding the foreign diplomats that the APNUFC coalition remains the government of Ghana at present. We are not aware of any provision in the constitution for a caretaker government. In fact, we have been the government since we have been elected, and we continue to be the government until fresh elections are held and a new government would come into office. Presently, the government is of the view that the issues surrounding the no-confidence vote have created a controversy, and there are contentions on both sides of the political divide on what constitutes a majority of all the elected members in the National Assembly. There are some advocates that said that you needed 33 votes. Some others have said you need 34 votes to make a majority. Well, there is a contention here. Prime Minister Nagamutu stated that the government is of the belief that the promise made by the Speaker to deal with the consequences of the vote should be allowed to take place. And on the international scene, Democrat Nancy Pelosi was elected again today as the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives as a party took majority control of the chamber following its election victory last November 6. More in this report from Reuters Television. And to the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, I extend to you this gavel. Thank you. 
An historic moment for Nancy Pelosi amid turmoil in Washington. The veteran lawmaker taking the gavel as Speaker of the House for a second time. Pelosi reclaiming one of Washington's most powerful jobs, 12 years after being sworn in as the first female Speaker, as the Democrats regain majority control in the House of Representatives. Our nation is at an historic moment. Two months ago, the American people spoke and demanded a new dawn. They called upon the beauty of our Constitution, the, our system of checks and balances that protects our democracy. But Pelosi takes the helm amid a raging storm, a clash over border security with President Trump pushing a partial government shutdown into its 13th day. The shutdown triggered by Trump's demand for $5 billion for a wall with Mexico, which Democrats vehemently oppose. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.pb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also nice to be media in bus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening. <laughs>